you accept it and you believe it. And guess what? It leads us to Christ. We live in hope of eternal life. We have faith in Christ and believing, having faith in Christ, we have life in his name. By his authority, by his testimony, by his evidence. We have faith in that, not by our opinion, not, my, not by me getting up here and pontificating about all this and telling you that you need to have faith in Christ. That might have something to do with this teaching avenue that we are uh, involved in. But the reality is, of course, Luke says you. He says to Theophilus, you look at this. Here it is. And he's telling all of us, you look at this as well. <coughs> and examine. <coughs> Excuse me, please. You look at all of this and you examine, and you've got you've got to decide. And so, let's look at this. What is our responsibility to these things that are most surely believed? Well, we can save ourselves from sin. Now, what I mean by that is we have a responsibility to look to the Word of God. And to accept the gospel. The gospel is the story from God about who Jesus Christ is and what Jesus Christ has done for us. Romans 1.16, the gospel is God's power unto what? Salvation. That's right. So if you and I want to be saved and we can be saved, we can look to the gospel. We need to do that. The salient features of the gospel are found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus lived, he died, he was buried, he was what? Raised from the grave. And it is upon that basis that Paul says, I'm preaching the gospel and if these things aren't true then why bother? I don't have any message to preach. We don't have any faith. We don't have anything to stand on. But I want you to look at this passage. I know I've read this passage before as have you. But it just struck me in a kind of a different way. Galatians 2.16. Look at Galatians 2.16. Paul says this, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. What a powerful passage that is. Talk about passage that passages that encapsulate, that sum up in such a vibrant, poignant way about the gospel plan of salvation. That's that passage. And here is the reality for you, the reality for me. We cannot save ourselves in the context of going back to the law of Moses. The law of Moses cannot save, or even a law system cannot save, unless you can keep the law perfectly. If you keep the law perfectly, guess what? You don't need a Savior. If you keep the law perfectly, you don't need a Savior. You can do like the disciples did in John 6 and just leave Jesus. It doesn't matter. But we can be saved from sin. And then there is this idea. I didn't show you that, did I? There it is. And then here is this idea of preaching the gospel uh, to the apostles, Jesus says, going to all the world to preach the gospel. There's no doubt about that. We've got to do that. They did that. Uh, people say, well, that was to the apostles. But he did say, well, I'm with you always, even at the end of the world. And the end of the world hasn't come yet. And here we are. You and I are still here. So we've got to do something about that. Since I'm here in Galatians, are you still there? Look in Galatians 1.23. Look at Galatians 1.23, but they were hearing only, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. Talking about Paul, talking about himself. They heard this and they were right about it. That's what he was trying to do on the road to Damascus and all of these other clues that we have about his past life as the chief of sinners. But now what is he doing? Well, what he's doing now is he's preaching the gospel. He's going into all the world preaching the gospel of Christ. We've got to obey. Jesus says, except ye believe that I am what? That I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Does it sound like we need to have faith in the Lord in order to be saved? If 
Why wouldn't we want to have faith in the Lord? Why wouldn't we want to be saved? I guess some people don't want to be. Uh, sometimes people say, yes, I want to be, but they don't get around to doing what, what the Bible says. I'm trying to find this. Look at 2 Thessalonians 1. It was here this afternoon. I found it. The Apostle Paul, talking to the Thessalonian Christians, relatively new believers in Christ, listen carefully. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7. And to give you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angel. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on. Now listen to this. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Does God want everybody to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth? Yes. Did Jesus die on the cross for everybody? Yes. Will everybody be saved? No. But is it God's fault? Are we going to lay the, the culpability at the feet of Almighty God and say it's your fault? No, we have the choice, you see. We have that opportunity to believe the things that are revealed to us, to have strong faith in the Lord. Verse 9. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His and then as we pay attention to the gospel, let's think about the fact that we need to do as Jude 3 says. And Jude 3 says, we contend earnestly for the faith. Now, think about what Jude says, the faith. That's talking about not our subjective personal faith. If you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is your own faith. It's not my faith, it's your faith. It is your own personal subjective faith in the sense that you are holding this faith predicated upon certain factors, evidence, testimony, whatever it may be. The faith is talking about that objective body of truth collectively known as the New Testament of Jesus Christ. And it has been one time for all time delivered to the saints, Jude says. That is safely, re safely revealed and deposited. Now, I don't have the passages. You know them in First and Second Timothy. Guard the deposit, guard the trust. All these passages are saying the same thing in regard to what the Word of God is. And so it is, you talk about taking something to, to the bank, it's been safely deposited. That is, it, it is full and complete and relevant. Why, how could it not be that way if it comes from Jesus who has the words of eternal life? We're striving for the faith of the gospel, Paul said in Philippians 1.27. Striving for the faith of the gospel. It's not lackadaisical. It's not no old home. It's not I can take it or leave it. It requires the very best efforts that we can give to God and to the will of God. That's what Luke is helping us understand. That's what the New Testament is helping us understand. Jay said this morning, and I don't disagree with what he said, that if you read the Bible more, you'll have a stronger faith. There is a correlation between having strong faith and paying attention to the Word of God. If faith comes by what? By hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ, then you and I, if we're going to have faith in God, we've got to pay attention to the Word of God. I might say that that's not all we need to do. That is, you've got to act upon what you're reading. You take it into your life, into your heart, you've got to pay attention to it. I mean, the disciples, did they have faith of some kind at one time in John 6, but they went back and walked no more with them? There were people in John 12 who said they believed that Jesus was the Christ, but for fear of being put out of the Son of God, they refused to confess that. And so, yes, read the Bible. We've got to read the Bible. Because these are, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13 says, these, are, these things, this is not the wisdom of man. This is the wisdom of God. This comes to us from God. And so what it says is believe it, except believe it. Here's the certainty, you see. That's what the Bible, if we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, we're believing that the Bible speaks with certainty about God and about our relationship to God. Now, it's just one thing for me to say, well, I believe this and I believe that. I don't want to predicate my soul's salvation on just what I think. Do you? That is, I want to have some evidence. I want to have some testimony. 
I want to look into it and to have that sure foundation of God and of God's Word. To close, let's just say this. Here are the things that you and I must surely believe. Are they important to you? Are they important to me? You can judge how important God's Word is to you by your attention. Paying attention to God's word or not paying attention to God's word. Or living in accordance with God's will. But let's remind ourselves that we can be saved only by God's word. The gospel of God. The message of salvation. And I'll just say this. If you and I, I'm confident when I say if you and I now will obey the words of Christ. If we'll believe them. If we'll teach them. If, they'll, if we'll make them a part of, of who we are right now, at that last day, when the Lord says to you, when the Lord says to me, come, join me in my Father's house. When the Lord says that to us, I'll tell you the things most surely leave then at that last day. We're going to be glad that we leave them. They'll be sacred to us. They ought to be sacred to us now. And how much more as we think about heaven with the Lord when this life is over. If you've never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have that opportunity. We have reference to great commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's what Mark says about it. Mark 16, 15 and 16. Baptism into Christ, uniting with Christ in the likeness of his death, having your sins washed away in the precious blood of God's Son. That's what God's Word tells us to do. Do we have enough faith to do what God tells us to do in His Word? If we don't have enough faith to do what God tells us to do in His Word, we don't have enough faith to be saved. But we can have faith in God, in the will of God, and obey and become His children. While we stand, while we sing, we pray.